getting a lot of emails and texts about EHD. What is EHD? Let's talk about the truth of EHD. EHD stands for Epizootic Hemorrhagic, a lot of bleeding hemorrhagic disease, EHD. A lot of people call it blue tongue. There's actually a separate blue tongue virus, but they both impact deer the same way. One of the big differences is blue tongue is known to also impact cattle. EHD rarely, if ever, impacts cattle, although I did hear a report this year where the state vet of Ohio had confirmed a deer EHD had impacted cattle. I don't know if that's substantiated or accurate yet or not. EHD, those deer get a high fever and the vector or the causative agent is spread deer to deer by very small biting fly, a lot of people call them a midge. These aren't big house flies, they're very, very small almost microscopic. And the reason that always occurs more in drought years, think of 2012, wicked drought. This year is very dry in a lot of areas. The breeding habitat for those biting flies is mud. So the perfect scenario is a really, really wet spring, water gets up really high, then a dry late summer, August, early September, September until the frost, that water recedes and we have more mud than normal. That's more breeding habitat for these biting flies. And then when it's really dry, the deer go to those limited sources of water, wade out through the mud, and those flies can bite them. And they get that EHD on their teeth, the causative agent, and they can take it from one deer to another to another. EHD can be in an acute form. And in that acute form, the deer usually die in about three days. They almost always go to water with a very high fever. Or there's a chronic form, you may harvest a deer later this winter that looks like their hooves have sloughed off, or they've always sloughed off and it's a nub down there. That's the chronic form of VHD, and a lot of deer survive VHD. It's not 100% fatal. So a lot's been known about EHD. I had a real intense class at the vet school of the University of Georgia called Wildlife Diseases. I think it's the most intense of its kind in the world that I'm aware of at least back in the day, you know, and we had to walk 40 miles uphill through the snow to get there. And EHD has been studied for decades, six plus decades. A lot is known about it. There's nothing you can really do about it. You see a lot of feeds and stuff advertised, but oddly enough, those same people have EHD die off. So don't be spraying insecticide and all the creeks and water around there. You gotta think past deer and all the other creatures that are drinking out of there. And do you wanna eat a healthy deer that's drinking out of a little pond, you just coat it with an insecticide. So EHD is very well studied, widely known. In 2012, we lost over a third of the deer in a few weeks at the proven grounds. It can be devastating, but always the deer bounce back because what happens is it's like a massive doe harvest except bucks die too. And a couple of years following that, there's ample groceries for all the deer. And so you have bigger antler size per age class because there's so many groceries so many months out of the year. EHD is horrible, tragic. There's no solution. Hasn't been a solution in many decades. It's a natural thing. It's a little bit more pronounced now because some of these causative agents that come over on exotic pets and the, and the stuff in them has escaped into our environment and our deer don't have any resistance to that. That's what happened in the 2012 outbreak that resulted in the death of so many deer. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, PH Outdoors, Black Widow Bows, Moultrie Mobile, Steel, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, Fourth Arrow, Soil Pro Outdoors, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Burris Optics, and Redneck Hunting Blocks. You know, if EHD's cooking where you are, and you probably know it because there'd be dead deer around bodies of water. That's not CWD, that's totally different. CWD deer don't go to water, they don't get that big high fever at the end. So if you're seeing that, and you're seeing a lot of it, you need to back off your doe harvest. Remember, does are reproductive units of a deer herd. So if you're losing a lot of deer, you don't want to cut down the ability for that deer herd to build back up, and you may need to back off your doe harvest. But do not use this as an excuse 
to back off the doe harvest everywhere. We know that doe harvest has been lacking throughout much of the whitetails range the past few years, and many deer herds are above a healthy carrying capacity. Raw to deer have enough groceries 12 months out of year. We're not backing off our deer harvest here because we haven't found any sign of DHD here. But if you're seeing a bunch of dead bodies laying around ponds, you might want to back off that doe harvest some. Second most common question we get during this time of year after EHD is cooking is if you harvest a deer in the season, has sloughed hooves, is it okay to consume the meat? And just like any deer, if you dress a deer, you don't see any you know, signs of infection or anything like that, There's the meat smells normal, there's no signs of infection, I would certainly consume that deer. But if you're seeing signs of that infection on up in the body cavity, you're seeing signs of infection in the body cavity, I certainly would not feed that meat to my family. Last fall, I had the privilege to partner up with Burris Optics and film a documentary about their full field line, celebrating 50 years of that tremendous rifle scope. It's probably the best scope for the price point I've ever used. It's what Daniel and I have been using exclusively for several years now. And the documentary, well, of course, it's about me and my career and my, you know, how I've been able to do stuff in the whitetail world and also about that full field scope and the legend of Burris Optics. You can check it out. It's going to be on the Burris Optics YouTube channel, and we'll put a link in the description. EHD is tough, and these natural cycles come and go. You know, stuff through history has come and went, famine and wars and stuff like that. We know that. The Creator told us there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. And the best defense we have in almost everything in life is to seek the Creator's will by studying God's Word and applying it to our lives daily. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.